Dwarf oh Lord. my god, here it comes. All right, well, the nerfs for Hydra, Trunda, Shields, etc., all of that, all of these complex solutions that Polarium said that they were going to implement, we'll see what they're actually going to be. There's also very specific questions that Polarium or the community managers representing Polarium has uh, sent us and answered already. So let's watch this video. Let's go over the Q&A. Then I want to hear what you guys think. Is this going to be a positive or a negative? I haven't seen this video yet, but I'm kind of uh, on the fence. I'm holding my breath. So we'll see. But let's start from the beginning. Let me know what you guys think. Hey, everyone. We've got a different kind of update preview for you today. We're showing off some balance changes coming to the Hydra and a few other areas of the game. Along the way, we'll explain why we're making these changes, but here's a quick overview. The current meta is way too limiting to players who don't have specific champions in their collection. We want you to experiment with different tactics and teams, switching things up each week. Let's dive in and take a closer look at what's coming. First up, we're setting the turn limit at 1,000 turns. Auto battle. Wait. <laughs> So we're going to be doing less damage altogether? Cutting down the time by at least half an hour? I mean, I, I guess. This is the way it usually works for me when I do my Hydra runs, specifically with, with Trunda. Basically, my Trunda abusing Hydra teams, it goes to 1,500 turns, and that usually takes like 36 minutes. 34, 35, 36 minutes to do. So now it's going to get done a lot faster. So you might see that as a blessing. You can see that as a blessing because... That means less time. You can go on with your life and go do something else. I mean, not that it really matters because if you just set it and walk away, it just doesn't really matter. But if you're one of those guys that really sit there to min max and spend hours because you just need to get like the top score, then it might be different for you. Um, maybe you're missing out on millions of damage and that might be a downside for you and your clan. But some of you might see the positives in that. By the way, did you know that when Newt does his A2, he summons Mountain King? can easily take over an hour, so we're aiming to cut down the time by at least half an hour. You'll now need to build teams that do damage faster, rather than teams built for a war of attrition, with a few- I think that's specifically addressing the infinity comps that people have been using for Hydra. Adjustments. You'll have no problem reaching the damage numbers needed to get your usual rewards. Moving on. We're changing how the Serpent's will buff works. Most importantly, and brace yourselves, folks, it now reduces damage by 100% for a newly grown Hydra head. Yep, you read that right. Comple Wait. Serpent's will currently decreases the damage that the Hydra head receives by a certain amount. It's noticeable also. So now they're basically invincible when they have the... When a new head's going to come out, and it's going to be untouchable. I think we're not going to be able to because he said 100%, right? I don't know about that. That seems like they just kind of made it harder. Complete damage. You read that right. Complete damage reduction. You won't be able to nuke a newly grown head straight out of the gate anymore. There's good news, too. If two heads regrow at the same time, only one of them will get the serpent's will buff. Champions okay. have gotten stronger since the Hydra initially reared its heads. What with Awakening, Empowerment, and Mythical Champions joining the fray. We were seeing Hydra heads nuked as soon as they rejoined the battle, even with the 75% damage reduction. So, to make the fight even, and bring back some of the challenge that's been lost- It's so weird seeing this game run in one time speed. Due to the game's evolution, the Hydra is getting a little stronger too. We're also making changes to digestion and devouring. Wait, so... Now whenever a new head comes out, you can't do any damage to it. However, it's only going to happen with one head. So if two heads pop out, three heads pop out all at the same time, only one of the heads is going to receive the serpent will buff. I can see how Trunda might be, I'd say significantly nerfed. A lot of the times, if a new head comes out, all Trunda has to do is hit the A2 on a decapitated head. Any new heads that pop out are going to be cut off again. You know how late on in the battle, your champions start getting digested on a two turn countdown? Well, for every subsequent time they get digested after that first two turn countdown, the damage you'll need to do to free your champion increases. Like with Serpent's Will, digestion and devouring lost much of its intended challenge over time as more powerful champions. Why? <laughs> All right, so first, like, 
my my sentiment is this right one it's just a game two i kind of am trying to take the the positive side of it where it's just like okay well i mean i guess i guess i don't have to focus so much on hydra even less but on top of that i was already not really focusing on it just kind of letting my my teams run and then whatever happens happens but at the same time why make it difficult like what if you're somebody who's not an end game player such as myself or a content creator what if you're somebody who's new struggling to do hydra you don't have the champs or the gear like yeah that kind of forces you to work harder on your gear and, and and all that but at the same time it's like i feel like that might be a little bit uninviting because hydra already is uninviting and when you make it a lot more difficult by decreasing well i mean i'm not really worried about new players and hitting the turn limit but like when you make this harder to do it becomes an issue and, and a lot of people are just going to be like well i mean what's the point in even doing it for an example amius is something that i don't bother with because i know how difficult it is to do and i know how long it's going to take me to do it even if i have the champions and the gear and the know-how on how to do it i don't want to spend three hours fighting amius hoping that the rng lands in my favor it's the same thing with hydra a lot of people are going to want to get the rewards for doing Hydra, but if they come across this type of difficulty, I don't know. Some features were introduced. It was always meant to be one of the Hydra's key mechanics and an ever-present threat, but it became really easy to rescue allies that were being digested. So we're bringing that fear back into digestion. Taunts won't help anymore either. The Hydra has shed its thin skin and petty insults will no longer distract it from a delicious champion meal sat right in front. Yeah, so there goes all I'm pretty sure any of those teams, those taunt loop teams, those are all dead in the water now. Those are absolutely just destroyed, I'm pretty sure. Those aren't going to going to work anymore. I don't I've never used the Wixwill team, but let me know, does the Wixwill um comp, Infinity Comp, does that rely on taunts? Let me know, because I, I don't know. But that sucks. That sucks that they're gonna make it harder to get your champions out. Like one of the worst feelings going against Hydra is the digestion plus this life barrier shield in front of it in short once a champion receives the mark of the hydra debuff they become public enemy number one and taunt isn't going to do anything about it taunt is a cool mechanic but new champion combinations emerged that could totally negate the mark of the hydra less cool it's not all bad news though your team's ai will now prioritize attacking the head that is digesting when you're running in auto battle mode i like how his voice is like yeah it's going to be hard, but it's not cool if it's easy. <laughs> There's two schools of thoughts for this, right? One school of thought is it's good if the community is able to find ways to outsmart a difficult game or a game that is designed to be for pay to win, um, you know, Krakens. It's smart to find a, a way to circumvent those issues. And then there's the other side of it where it's just like, well, it's one thing to jump in to being able to one key hydra hydra nightmare or brutal or whatever and then it's another thing to do it without knowing the mechanics or the foundation because essentially you're skipping the game you're skipping learning the mechanics of the game so i see where where the two schools of thought come from right one is saying hey let me just cheese my way through the game but there are some people within that school of thought who also don't know how to manage certain content and because of that, they start asking questions like, well, how do I beat this? And I forgot who the content creator was, but somebody in one of my videos was like, hey, there was a content creator who was able to like one key clan or like do 300 million on clan boss or like, I think it was like 300 million on, on Hydra or something, but they were struggling with the nether spider. And I'm not judging or anything, but I mean, I feel like the difficulty, it just doesn't match because it's it's too easy to just copy and paste the team now again like i'm saying it's one thing to know how to play the game and learn the mechanics and know how to do that and choose to use one of those cheese comps because it saves you time and and whatnot that's cool but i think a lot of people should spend the time to learn how to play the game prioritize attacking the head that is digesting when you're running in audible mode teamwork makes the dream work exposed necks are also getting a rework from now on, Exposed Next will have a set HP value that is double the original head's HP. Once that value reaches zero, the head will immediately regrow. With constantly regrowing Hydra heads, you'll need to think on your feet and have tactics in place for all potential scenarios. Oh, man, Hydra battles are about to get much tougher. So now there is a limit to Exposed Next. You can only do X amount of damage to the decapitated heads. It's not like it is currently where 
you could just run a really fast team and place decreased speed on the capitated necks and just completely pump out as much damage as you want. Now there's a set limit. But the changes don't stop there. We've got a few more lined up to help keep things balanced, starting with shields. Shields will now receive a cap of one million points. This cap is separate for shields placed by artifacts and shields placed by skills, though. So you could get up to two million points of shield. <laughs> just, I can't take this guy's voice. Like, I, I get it. it. It's cool. It's fine. It's fine. It, it's all, you know, I, I'm, I'm not like hating on it. I just think it just, I can't stop but, but like laugh on it. It's just, it kind of reminds me of that Austin Powers when, when Dr. Evil is like one million dollars. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and uh, sorry, I, I, I'm a simple man. I found that funny. These caps are still big enough to ensure powerful builds remain viable for taking on the Demon Lord and Right the there, Yannicka, Wixville, there goes your boy, Emic. I don't use shield teams, so I don't know how this works or if this is going to be... I mean, it sounds like a nerf to me. Even if I don't use it, it's, it's, it sounds like a nerf, but maybe one of you guys could let me know how much of a nerf this is, or if it is, because I could be wrong, since I don't know this type of comp. Hydra, but they'll not be as game-breaking as before. And lastly, we come to everyone's favorite dwarf. Oh my god, here it comes. Here herself, Trunda Guild Mallet. Don't worry, we're not nerfing her into oblivion. We're just rebalancing some of her skills to keep her damage numbers in Hydra battles more reasonable. Starting with her default skill, Golden Mallet, Trunda will now have a 50% chance to place a stun debuff on both hits. A little upgrade, but a neat one for PvP. Trunda's second skill, Cloak of Ages, will now ignore 50% of each target's defense on her second hit. However, the caveat here is that it will only ever be a normal hit. It's still big damage, but it won't be quite as astronomical as they have been before. Forge Rhythm, Trunda's third skill, now placed... And so for those who don't know the Cloak of Ages skill, that was the bread and butter of Trunda teams. This is a straight up nerf to Trunda, and I kind of feel badly. Actually, no, I don't fucking feel badly. What am I saying? I can't help but think about all the Krakens and whales and the people who spent money to summon Trunda or empower her all the way. For me, this is just another nail in the coffin for, for me to be like, well... I'm not going to ever really chase a champion because shit like this can happen all the time. I'm not saying that I'm against nerfing Trunda, but I'm. it's just something that I'm thinking about. And I'm pretty sure, I mean, you guys already know me. I, I always do Reddit reacts and, and whatnot. We have that Burrito podcast. So we'll see what the community sentiment is, and I'll definitely read your guys' comments down below. This is consistent HP burn debuffs, and both hits from this skill deal 50% more damage to enemies under a stone skin shield. Another neat boost to her overall kit. Yeah. And finally, her passive skill now increases Trenda's attack by 5% for each stun or HP burn debuff she places on enemies. Her speed will still be increased as well, both by stun and HP burn debuffs. All in all, Trundle isn't going anywhere. We still expect her to be an excellent choice for Hydra battles and the arena. We tested a ton of early, mid, and late game champion rosters and team compositions when making these changes. Our results showed things will get better. You'll still be able to earn Hydra chests and milestone rewards in Hydra Clash. And you'll spend less time fighting the Hydra each week. As always, we'll be keeping an eye on your feedback and monitoring game data to see how these changes affect Hydra battles overall. There monitoring game data if you did not believe me in any of my past videos before where i talked about how polarium is tracking our data every single resource our participation in events they just said it themselves they're monitoring our data we hope this preview has been useful for you and will help oh, you wait, what did he just say back here hydra chests and milestone rewards in hydra clash and you'll spend less time fighting the Hydra each week. Yeah. As always, we'll be keeping an eye on your feedback and monitoring game data to see how these changes affect Hydra battles overall. We hope this preview has been useful for you and will help you prepare for more battles against the Hydra. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe. Bro, like, how are people going to work around this now? A lot of people rely on those types of teams to do buku amounts of damage to hydra for for hydra clash and everything and i'm just curious because we already know what the community is going to do they're going to find something they're going to find something you already know now it's time to answer some uh, questions that you guys might have we'll see so in questions to polarium common questions that were asked why did it take you so long to change hydra they said it was a complicated decision 
As you may imagine, it involved a lot of testing and finding the correct approach. True, tried lots of different options before we ended up with this particular solution. Is Trenda dead now? I think she is. But our intention was not to kill Trenda, but to end her abusive reign on Hydra. So now I'm wondering if Polarian was just like, all right guys, we milked Trenda as much as we can from all the Krakens and it looks like all the Krakens pretty much have Trenda. So I think it's okay to nerf, just like how they let um, Taurus and Mariska reign for two years on uh, Live Arena, or not Live Arena, oh yeah, Live Arena 2, but PVP in general, just all over the place before doing a pseudo nerf. Thus, instead of nerfing her, made some rebalancing to keep her viable. But I mean, like that second hit only being able to hit normal sounds like a nerf to me. We made some rebalancing that still kept her viable on Hydra, opened up some extra possibilities for her use in other game modes. I do like that it now ignores stone skin, so that's interesting. This feisty badass is still strong, but not broken. Why shields? I think we all agree during our previous conversations, the infinite shields are pretty abusive and might be destructive for the game. Thus, this cap for overall shield mechanics was definitely needed. It's interesting that as soon as everybody was able to get Wixwill, and remember, nobody knew that Wixwill was going to be integral, integral for Infinity Comps and Hydra. I feel like it's weird, the timing, right? Because as soon as, like, and again, they're tracking our data, as soon as everybody was able to start one keying uh, Hydra left and right and doing billions of damage, they were like, okay, well, this is this is an issue. This is killing Hydra. This is killing a game mode for us that we don't want, and we are we don't want that to happen. The cap for overall shield mechanics was definitely needed. And I, I think there was quite a few, there's several of you guys who actually suggested this, the cap for overall shield mechanics. So I think I think this was okay. Uh, and again, I, I'm 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 in the middle. If any of you guys are sitting here wondering, listening, like, okay, well, what does Burrito think? Dude, I'm chill. I already, if anything bad happens, I'm like, well, one, it's just the game. Two, it's already expected. And three, I just don't, like, invest too much into the game anymore in terms of, like, uh, my emotions. I'm kind of just like, I, I enjoy it for what it is, and, you know, I, I dig it. If they do something really bad, and I don't want to support it, or I, I feel strongly about it, like this deck of fates, I don't participate in it, in it. Even if it's for content and it's potential for content, I'm not going to do it because it just sends the wrong signal. Again, they're tracking our data. I don't want to be one of the numbers that support their decisions. If Polarium sees that the norm, the new norm that they're setting is okay, and they keep pushing boundaries to see what the player, the players are okay with, it's gonna keep going lower and lower and lower. If you're okay with mediocre and you show them that, they're gonna keep doing it and they're gonna keep abusing it. I appreciate the game, but you could also be critical. You can be respectful and appreciative of something, but you can also be critical of it respectfully. But what about clan boss? Clan boss is fine. We don't need to kill the CB teams. A small spoiler alert, we're looking closely into it and might increase the cap if the squishier teams won't be able to make it. I think Yumiko was the problem. Just wanted to address this one because I've heard so many opinions that it's Yumiko who was the main culprit. Well, it turned out that tweaking Yumiko won't solve the situation in this case. Yes, she definitely played her part, allowing the abuse of mechanics that didn't work as, attended, as intended. We're still monitoring the whole thing, but for now, we're not doing anything with Yumiko. So Yumiko is gonna stay. Will I be able to get any chests now? Those who were able to get the last chest before the Great Hydra rebalance will still be able to get it. I know it might look like it's going to be hard on smaller players. While Hydra will become more challenging, it's important to say that the threat escalation will actually kick in around 100 Hydra turns making. Threat escalation? Which which one is what is this? So you'll have this time until it gets harder to deal necessary damage and score numbers for the chest. I don't remember this part being in the video. Threat escalation? And I guess it's the same thing as in Clan Boss, where after what is it, after 10 turns, it starts to get harder. And so after 100 turns with Hydra, it'll quote unquote get harder. That's why a lot of unkillable teams only go so far as 50 turns if you're running an unkillable comp, because at 50 turns, clan boss starts to ignore those mechanics. Do I have to say goodbye to Hydra on auto? Not at all. We've made sure to run tests on auto as well. That's why we're changing the AI. The head that is digesting will be prioritized, or on the contrary, the head under Serpent's Will won't be prioritized as targets. They take something away, but then they give us something at the same time. They're doing all these things to nerf, but then they're kind of giving us something that I feel... Like this, changing the AI so that they would automatically attack the, di the digesting head, or avoiding attacking the heads that have Serpent Will on them, which has been a problem in Hydra, I feel like that should have been a thing already. Like that should have just been a thing. And then for them to go like, oh yeah, we're taking all this away, but hey, 
we're giving this to you. We're giving this to you. Look, look at this. This is add this to the list of things that we're giving to you. When it's just like, bro, that should have been there already. You're giving me the bare minimum, so you can still run Hydra battles on auto. It'll take significantly less time now. And this whole only going to a thousand turns, I'm leaning more towards yes, just because less time. Will the Hydra head be able to receive buffs or debuffs under Serpent Will? Yes, it's a niche question but useful to know. Just as always, we'll keep monitoring this game mode, collecting your feedback, make tweaks if necessary. Hey, he's bouncing off my booty cheeks. I love the way he rides.